Welcome to the Bridge the Divide podcast with Erica Turner and Heidi Wheeler, hosts and founders of the group Bridge the Divide Cedarburg. We hope to provide a forum for discussion and action around racial reconciliation. We seek to identify instances of inequality, foster empathy, and educate others to recognize their part in problems and solutions in Ozaki County and beyond. Hello, Bridge community. Thank you so much for joining us again for another great uh, community interview, which I think these kind of fa- these are kind of falling into a, a nice little pattern of interviewing folks from the community. And our guest today, along with Heidi, who, you know, Heidi's not a guest. We're just hanging here together, but we invited somebody. <laughs> How's it going, Heidi? It's good. Um Pardon any background noise. I'm at a cafe while my daughter gets her braces. We podcast no matter what's going on. And so I don't know how the sound quality is going to go, but we're committed to this podcast. We are and we're excited to talk to Kayla today. I like that. And our guest today is Kayla Stofflet. Kayla, thank you so much for stopping by. How's it going? It's going pretty good. I'm, I'm happy to be chatting with you guys. I wish it were in person, but this will do. This will do. We'll do it. So Kayla, if um, I'll I'll give just a a brief bio, but then we're going to let Kayla talk about herself and and let you know about what she's doing. But Kayla, I met uh, last year as we were working on Peace in the Park. We had had a turbulent uh, spring and summer so far, and we heard about Peace in the Park. We met with Kayla great connection, you know, networking, building our community. Things didn't go the way we thought they were going to go. And then I also also, uh, work with Kayla and our Cedarburg Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Task Force. So that's how we're connected. And I want to, Kayla, give you a a chance to say hey to the Bridge community and, and tell us about yourself. Absolutely. Well, hello, Bridge community. Um, I, I have never been on a podcast before, so I'm just going to go ahead and throw that out there. Um, that, that's all I'll say right there, but I, I'm Kayla Stofflet. Um, I, I was very happy to connect with Bridge the Divide, uh, a year ago as well. Um, I'm a newer member of the, you know, Cedarburg community. I am a staffing specialist for housing and property management, uh, started Peace in the Park kind of on a whim. It was a whole five days of planning uh, last year. And uh, now I've been able to, I guess, really connect more with the community in Ozaki County and even outside Ozaki County on kind of bringing this event to life this year. Uh, So I am on, like Erica said, a part of the DEI task force. And I also represent NAACP Ozaki County as the Labor and Industry Committee Chair. Uh, So a lot of really great things going on, but I guess just me professionally to talk a little bit more about that, uh, really my role is to connect, you know, the unemployed population with career paths. So it's a very rewarding thing for me. Um, Been doing it for four years with my company and it's given me a lot of perspective just on, you know, workforce in general and connecting people to opportunities, which um, is kind of a similar mission to Bridge the Divide as well. So yeah, thank you guys for having me. Connections, connections, I love it. So, you know, the elephant in the room, might as well start with it. Peace in the Park 2020. (laughs) Whew. What, what was going on there? And then we'll get to a part, well, how we'll just not have that happen again. But, you know, right. you're just jumping right in. It was fast. It was intense. And, it and was. you know, it was on social media and there was a it was this is going to happen. Look at this great thing. So, yeah, so what happened there? So, you know, between, you know, obviously George Floyd and just COVID in general, I think everyone was in a really fragile place. And I found myself just absolutely needing to 
to call the community together and ask for a conversation. And I, I put it out there on social media, had no idea that we were going to see hundreds of people that wanted to participate. And um, it just every day in between, I think it was like a Monday or Tuesday between that Saturday, it was just more and more people reaching out to me, connecting and wanting to get involved and just some overall really good conversations. Um, so, you know, what started as kind of just like, oh, let's meet at a picnic table in the park really turned into a, a larger crowd. We, unfortunately, due to COVID and how I wanted to utilize the park, you know, having it labeled as an event did cause some, you know, difficulties with obtaining insurance due to COVID during the pandemic. So um, the way that I wanted to host the event uh, really kind of, you know, not necessarily as a protest, but as a, as a gathering, it just did not work out. So um, long story short, we still met at the park <laughs> and had some really good conversations. Um, and, you know, it, it was such a, it was small, but it was definitely the right start for us with peace in the park. So now well, we, have, you say, we have, more you time. say that it was small, but like you said before, there were a lot of people that were interested yeah. in a short amount of time. Mm -hmm. what, what do you think since, since you aren't, weren't um, a part of the community at large before, right. what do you think that was about and why so many people responded with, sure, we'll be there. What do we need yeah. to do? there was a lot of, you know, you can count on us. I can get that for you. I can help you with this. And it was overwhelming the amount of support that I had. And, you know, I think it really came from a really emotional place for so many people in the community that were, you know, experiencing the pain of the loss of George Floyd and everything that had happened. And, you know, I think it kind of like, it just, I don't know, it just made everyone pour their hearts out and want to want to do something about it. And I, I still feel that same energy and I, I still see and, and feel the community wanting more of that, um, which is why we're continuing on with, with round two. Mm -hmm. And I, I would, I feel like I, I need to mention today is um, April 22nd. So, you know, we just recently got the verdict um, mm -hmm. back for the police officer that was involved in that killing for um, George Floyd that kind of sparked so many things last year right. how for for you personally I mean you can't speak for the whole world right but for right. you personally how does that feel cycling around like we we've seen something happen now right I mean it's definitely moving you know it's it's emotional and I think I've shared with you too before that you know when these things happen I have to kind of not turn it off, but I have to protect, protect myself emotionally because it, it is very heavy um, for all of us to, to carry that. And overall, I just, I'm just thankful justice was served and that there is a, an example set for, you know, other police officers that are responsible for, for making arrests and handling people appropriately um, so that things like this don't happen. Right. Definitely counting mm -hmm. on, on seeing more from that. Yeah, Heidi? Well, I was just going to, I've heard people saying that we're in a, a second civil rights era and comparing it to the 1960s. And I'm wondering what both of you think of that. Is that true? Because we're seeing things now, um, the, you know, the amount of voices that are coming forward, the amount of organizing, the amount of um, protests, or gatherings, um, mm -hmm. because that can be a, a, a an unpositive word. Um, right. Right. Like, and then if you think that that's true um, or not, how would you characterize peace in the park? Like you said, it's a place where you want people to gather and have conversation. But is it mm -hmm. more than that? Is it to send a message? Is it to, um, right. is it a, to protest? What, like, what else would you say to someone that you're inviting? or who's interested in coming. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I can definitely say, I mean, obviously, I wasn't, I wasn't around me personally in the 60s. But I can agree that it definitely feels that way that this is, you know, the second wind of that. Um, and I think that for anyone that's, 
you know, going, going through the motions right now. And, and just for me, a lot of it is just absorbing everything that's happening in the world. And, you know, it's, it's a lot. And we're, we're actually managing it completely differently than the sixties. You know, we're, we're having these conversations online. We're having them behind keyboards. We are, uh, you know, following, you know, certain organizations online and it's just very different than if you were in the flesh in person, not in a pandemic, you know? So I think it's important to also remember that, uh, that we're all kind of doing things a little differently than years past, but overall for someone that is, looking to attend Peace in the Park or interested in learning more about it, it really just is going to be a space where we can have some difficult conversations, some uh, educational opportunities, you know, and and honestly, just coming together and uniting as a community, uh, welcoming everyone from in, you know, inside Cedarburg and out. Uh, We've talked about that before too, right, Kayla? Like this is for as much as we all love Cedarburg and, right. and pick this as our place to settle, mm-hmm. there is a um, homogeneity that you can't pretend is not here. So when right. you have people who really have not interacted with folks that look like them, you know, you know, or don't look mm-hmm. like them, don't speak right. like them, don't pray mm-hmm. like them, don't think like them, it's it it funnels you into this this. Um, silo of the place. So, so there is just an automatic distancing from the other, whoever your other is, that's different. And this will, you know, from, from the onset, just inviting everybody in to say, Mm -hmm. come here with us, hang out, whether you live here, whether, you know, someone here hasn't interacted with someone like you. And that is, is, a big step because we have festivals, right? We like to, right. it's not like Cedarburg doesn't like to party, right? right? They will right. <laughs> put that out there, okay. but to have an, a, an invitation, like a real invitation, mm-hmm. I want all of you don't wait. Mm-hmm. To, do I fit? Am I supposed to be here? Do they want right. me here? everybody kind of show up? And that's a great, a great um, kind of flair to put out there saying all are welcome. Everybody right. coming out. Right, right. Yeah, the invitation is for everyone. And, you know, just kind of, again, just, you know, circling back on the fact that the theme of this really is about unity and connection. And, and, you know, no matter who you voted for, what you look like, what you got going on, you know, where you're from, you know, what your background is, this, this is an event for you. And I think that's the most important message is making sure all are included and invited to celebrate and be a part of this day. Mm-hmm. And you have picked a day for it. You want to let everybody know yes. when so it's supposed Peace to be? Yes. Yeah. So Peace in the Park is scheduled for Saturday, July 24th. And it we're still working out the details, but I believe we're looking at about a 9 a.m. start. And it should be an all-day event. Mm. All day with different kinds of things happening. You know, it's, it's uh, when you're talking about the unity, just having people that are different in the same place, but you have Mm -hmm. some, maybe some activities, some, you know, interesting, relaxing, but for everybody all together. Right. Yeah. It's definitely going to be a, you know, a family friendly day. I think we're talking about getting a bounce house. Don't quote me on that. We're hoping for a bounce house. <laughs> yeah, make any promises, parents. If not, we'll teach you how to jump rope, but right. you'll feel like yeah. you're in a bounce house. It's fine. Well, yeah, exactly. Mm. We'll do our best uh, for entertainment. But, you know, really, you know, everyone, including children, you know, are, are welcome to be a part of this day, especially youth and children. Uh, there will be guest speakers, live music. We also have a kind of a soccer tournament planned for the day. So that'll be uh, really great just to see, you know, students from all walks of life, you know, joining us that day as well. Um, You know, students, kids, you know, youth, that is the plan right now. I think, I think we're doing K through 12, but I have to talk to Hayden about that. (laughs) He's the soccer guy. So there's still a few months away to figure out those details. Yeah. Yeah. Just a little bit. Um, And so then I was going to say, Oh, okay. Go. Uh, oh, I can butt in later. Hold on. Finish your thought. Oh, I was only going to say the other part of it is we're going to have some educational sessions as well, kind of outside of the park, but close by. I won't say where yet, uh, but we are working out those details. And I think that'll be where, you know, 
we can kind of have that quiet space to do that. I know the park is loud and fun and exciting, but we'll, we'll have some separate space for education as well. Um, Kayla, I was just going to say it almost didn't happen last year because there was a lot of barriers. And I mean, probably one of them is that people don't see this as a unifying event. They see it mm -hmm. as you're bringing up something that I don't see you know, I don't, my town's good how it is. And you people are stirring up trouble by trying to point out things that aren't there. Right. And you're saying, no, everyone's welcome, which is what we're you, often, you know, as Bridge the Divide, we're saying we're all welcome to the table and we want to talk right. about hard things and grow right. as, as people. So what, what mm -hmm. would you say to, to people that see it as a scary event or something that's divisive how would you how would you counter that well it's definitely not something I'm unfamiliar with because I faced that quite yeah. a bit last year and that was yeah mm -hmm. one of those barriers you mentioned I mean you know not to get too personal but I mean geez I you know I had been uh, uh just on a personal note dating a person that lived in Cedarburg um, a gentleman that you know told me he was no longer interested because I was hosting peace in the park. And, you know, it was a very much oh, wow. not my town. You can't do that here kind of thing. And it, and it, it gave me perspective because I think it's important to, to listen and understand even when you don't necessarily agree or you're not on the same page. And for those that do feel that it is uh, not going to unite the community, I would ask you to, to take a look at the other perspective um, because literally if we all get together, we are united. <laughs> so, you know, I, I just, I see so much positive that can come from that. And the truth is, is that diversity fosters successful communities. And mm. that is what, that is what peace in the park is going to bring to Cedarburg. Um, you know, whether we're, we're inviting people from out of Cedarburg to explore our businesses and all that we have to offer here it is only going to be beneficial to our community. Mm -hmm. And, and mm -hmm. like you were talking about the, the soccer and all the different ages. So if mm -hmm. we take those from Cedarburg who maybe haven't been to a park in anybody else's neighborhood and therefore don't have like a place to organically meet somebody that's different, it's, right. it, it's something that you're constructing to help replicate something that maybe would organically happen if you were somewhere else. So I think it's also, mm. it can be thought of as kind of a staged thing. Like you're going to see mm -hmm. how much fun and how great this is to play soccer. Your kids are going to think it's great. Right. Have all these new friends. Mm -hmm. And maybe a step later will be for a mom that says, you know what? We can go to a bunch of different parks. We can invite more friends up right. here. We could also go to other parks and hang out right. with other people because right. it's not not scary and look my kids had this great experience they had so much fun mm -hmm. meeting a new kid and and how how to kind of expand on that in your life and then hopefully the grown-ups too right will go hey I was just hanging out with a mom that looks different than me and our kids were hanging out and you know maybe this isn't so bad maybe whatever was scary or uncomfortable even about the coming together part Maybe we should dispel some of that. Like, oh, well, it's not so bad. No, it's not. <laughs> right. It's pretty normal, actually. It's pretty normal. You know? And I think that there's going to be a lot of beautiful things that come of, of everyone gathering in the park together, you know, from all walks of life. And those connections, you know, I'm looking forward to hearing about who gets connected because of mm -hmm. peace in the park, you know, whether it's you know, um, a, pr a person of color that, you know, decides to open a business here or families that connect and their families grow. And, you know, it's just, I'm just really looking forward to that in the future. This sounds like a giant vision. So a little bit more than a couple days last year and kind of planning it out. So right. um, it's not like you have a corporation. What about helping to make it happen? Do you, do you have needs? Do you, is there an ask? I mean, you're on a podcast that hopefully gets right. around different people like do you have an ask that might yeah. help you get prepared for peace in the park uh, yes my wish list okay um my <laughs> wish list okay um 
man, uh, let's start with having more time in the day. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. Um, yeah. I, I think that if I could ask for anything, it would be for the, the community to spread the word, you know, about the event and to, um, you know, invite people from outside of Cedarburg to participate and to attend. And, you know, so that's, that's the easy part, you know, just sharing it and letting everyone know what's happening July 24th at Cedar Creek Park. But, you know, other than that, I, I would definitely be seeking, our group is seeking sponsors for musicians. And we also have like a refreshment tent for the soccer tournament. Um, you know, in addition to that, just any volunteers that would like to, to help with setup or, you know, many marketing hands make light like work. That. Mm-hmm. Um, that, that would be really helpful. That sounds good. So all of you listening, either pull up your sleeves and get ready right. to, to help Kayla out, or you know someone right. that knows someone that knows someone else that could, uh, you know, help with sponsorship or, or uh, <laughs> spreading the word, letting people know, put the save the date, right? July 24th. Mm-hmm. Um, you'll get more details later, but at least get that on the calendar. Right. Yeah. And in addition to that, you know, we are seeking vendors and um, food trucks, you know, that want to participate in the day. Um, If you are a a business, a restaurant, um, we even have a a therapist that's going to be joining us um, for kind of a mental health booth at the event. You know, I think there's something there's a space for everyone to, to get involved. So if you're interested Definitely find me online or just reach out to Erica because she's got all my I can find her. <laughs> <laughs> I'm everywhere, but yep. still. And if we get any additional links or information, we'll include those in the show notes of the podcast. So anybody that's listening can can reference links that are in the show notes. Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. So we have the Save the Date Facebook event. So you can follow along there for updates as well. So Save the Date, Peace in the Park. Sounds good. Um, so since since Peace in the Park is not all that you are, <laughs> you yes. want to tell us um, a little bit about uh, your work with the DEI committee and or your work with NAACP and, and talk mm-hmm. about that, too? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I always like to humble myself with I'm learning and I'm new to this and it's a lot. It's a lot. I I actually am also on the DEI council with my company. And what I can tell you about being involved with these committees and organizations is that for me personally, it's been a lot of of learning and educating myself. And uh, the conversations that I hear are very similar. You know, as we form these organizations, you know, what, what is our mission? And what can we do right now? And the biggest thing for me to, to absorb has been, this is, this is a very long-term mission for DEI efforts. And, you know, as much as we would love to meet probably daily and have these conversations, it just doesn't work out that way. So, you know, we space it out, you know, each month. And I think that having, having the involvement that I do, it's, it's been really rewarding and also, you know, there's so much progressive improvement just from having the conversations. I think that's something, um, Heidi, that we talk about a lot for Bridge the Divide in being curious, recognizing that there are some things that that either could be done better, there could there are some relationships that could be solidified. But being curious is a big, you know, a big thing that you're a proponent of, because how are you going to look and Mm -hmm. find more information or grow or learn if you're not even curious about you know, what's, what's different about that person or why isn't this relationship the way that it could be with people of different races? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, we talk about the, I think it's both cognitive. So there's knowledge deficits and it's emotional. Um, it, there's fears preventing people from uh, considering others that are different than themselves because of stereotypes and implicit biases. So what you're proposing is almost like this giant family reunion. Like you already belong, just come. We all belong and we can all hang out and we don't have to believe everything exactly the same. Can we, can we put some of our divisions aside and treat each other like human beings and like family members? Like, okay, maybe you're the crazy uncle and you're the whatever, but we, 
you belong and um you know it's not scary when you have a, a unity something that that unifies you like well family it can be scary but <laughs> <laughs> it's just like this this commitment to i want to know you better I, i'm committed right. to seeing you as a human being before I see you as a political party or before I see you as a skin color. Mm -hmm. And so I love, I love that, that vision you have for creating family, even among people who don't know each other, but it's people who are committed to that. But then there's going to be the people on the outskirts walking by the the park, judging it and, Mm -hmm. and nervous about it. And those are the people you really want there. Like it's not that scary, but yeah, they're I invited. Think, even I'm gonna go get them. <laughs> I'm to come in. Like, who is that lady running toward me? Oh, that's just Kayla. She's trying to bring you in. We're having a karaoke contest, and she oh, wants you to compete. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I think it it also it also lends to our conversation about the the um sitting in the tension of what this world is yeah. today, that there are so many things that we that we disagree on. It doesn't mean that we have to be disagreeable all the time. It doesn't mean that we mm. can't hang out at the, the refreshment tent and, and watch our kids play soccer and, you know, yeah. sit and listen to some music and still not have a one for one agreement of every single thing that's happening in our lives. And we can do that. And it, it also reminds me, uh, and I can't remember where I heard this, but um, we've he- all heard the concept of the melting pot. Like we're all in here together, right. one big melting pot, but there's a next level is why can't we be a salad bowl in a melting pot? You have no idea what you used to be. That carrot doesn't still look like the original carrot. It's <laughs> right, yeah. turning and changing into something else to in order to assimilate to be in the melting pot. But if we can right. all be the salad bowl where we right. can keep our individual um, characteristics, the things mm-hmm. that we like, you know, showing up as your authentic st- self and still be able to mix in and hang the out raw and vegetables. It, and it's still great <laughs> with all the raw vegetables before you cook them down into nothing. No, <laughs> I think somebody's got a new metaphor. I know. I, I I have to go search and see where I heard that. Like, we're not a melting pot. We're the salad bowl. And I'm like, oh, I was I like, like this, is, this is going to come <laughs> because, out again. I can you know, tell. Because for, yeah. for a person of color, <laughs> You know, when you're even when you're involved in things that it that it can many times feel like you don't want me to be who I am. You want me to be like you before you say you're you uh, you belong or you'll accept me. Why can't I just like whoever I am and believe whatever I believe and dress however I dress and still be a part of it. So I think this is going to be one of those things, too. Absolutely. We'll see it. We'll see it. Goody. So we have we talked a little bit about uh, Peace in the Park. We talked about how, you know, you can, as a part of your work, kind of a um, bloom where you're planted or your sphere of influence, things that you're doing at work as a part of your city. Um, what else would you like to tell us about Kayla Stofflet? What, ha- what haven't we what haven't we talked about? <laughs> Oh, gosh. Um, hang on. Let me read my notes. Um, <laughs> hang on a second here. Um, She's okay. like, I am cool. I am fantastic. Uh, you can oh, my gosh. Too. That's all right. Oh, my gosh. I'm a little quirky. I don't know if I'm cool. but <laughs> That's, That works, too. You know, and I think for me, I just want everyone to know, you know, I'm not I'm not a DEI expert. I'm just someone that that wants to see racial equality. You know, and I, and I think I want to see, I've always been someone that wanted to see everyone included ever since I was younger. Uh, I was definitely that person that, you know, rooted for the underdog and, you know, just, just tried, you know, to help people that were being picked on. Or if I noticed things like that, it, it was something that hit home for me. So that's where, I guess, where all my heart and soul of it all stems from, but I just think inclusion is so important and we need to remember that more because we all get in our own little bubbles. You know, we all get our own little world, you know, if it doesn't affect me, it doesn't matter. And it does, you know, think other things do matter and it's important to know what's going on outside of your community and, and what's going on inside your community. Mm -hmm. Uh, There's so many people that don't feel that racism is an issue, but yet we have people saying 
that live here that it is. So you can't really argue that it doesn't exist if someone is blatantly saying that it does. So, you know, that's just... Yeah, that's just me rambling now, but. <laughs> well, but that reminds me, I know that Heidi asked the question a little bit earlier about, is this another civil rights movement? And mm-hmm. and I really think that it is. I think that it's, you know, there's a there's an awakening and enlightenment of, of things that they didn't necessarily go away in the 60s. They changed, mm-hmm. you know, things aren't mm-hmm. as overt, but they're still happening. They happen in different ways. The way you respond to your point, you don't have mm-hmm. people standing outside with signs nearly as often as they mm-hmm. were in the 60s, but you do have the keyboard warriors that, right. you know, let their opinions be known. And some of the times mm-hmm. when I've seen some of those things, I think you're on the wrong side of history. Like, why, right. don't, why don't you realize that? Why, mm-hmm. why is the adjustment so hard? And when we are in the future and we turn and we look back at 2020 and 2021, we're going to look at some of those keyboard warriors the way we did when, when Ruby Bridges was walking into the school and those people that were yelling at her and spitting on her. And, you know, we're going to see that in the future and look back and go, man, how, why didn't you see what everybody was seeing there that, that it's right. not. Right. It's not good. We don't all know how to change and fix it all, but we're going to try, you know, right. we're going to be a part of DEI groups. We're going to join other committees and clubs and organizations. And then when we can't find exactly what we want, we're going to create it. So we're There's right. going to be a piece in the park right. that we're going to create from scratch to exactly. try to make those things happen so I I do appreciate your uh your uh steps in all those places and and seeing the the need and saying okay well I guess I'll do it here it is that's what I did (laughs) that is exactly what my yep I was like all right I guess I'll do this um I like to plan events anyway so it's not really too surprising I'm kind of an entertainer personally you know in my personal life but it's it's definitely something that I I hope you know for those that attend for those that are planning to attend or for those that are hesitant to attend that, you know, there is an opportunity for, for you individually to look inward and, you know, determine, okay, am I, am I empathizing, you know, with, with other people that are different than me? Am I taking time to understand where, where some of those people might be coming from? Am I, am I really sure of myself and how I really feel? Because there's plenty of people that I talk to that I love dearly, that may see very differently than me. And I appreciate those conversations so much. Um, But it's also a good time to, as things are heated, you know, with this, you know, the the trial for George Floyd, you know, we're still all feeling that right now. And obviously other current events that are taking place, it's still a good opportunity to, you know, kind of reinvest in yourself, you know, and, and making sure that you know what's going on out there. Thank you so much for coming to join us. I appreciate it. Um, uh, We would like to remind you, Peace in the Park, Save the Date event is out on Facebook. It's going to be July 24th is the plan. You'll get more details. But if you go out and... um, and at least say that you're interested on that on that uh, Facebook event, then you'll get some of those updates through that. Um, and any anything else, we'll have show notes. Any any um, any last parting thoughts that you'd like to to share with the the community here, Kayla? See you on July twenty fourth. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be there. Day in the park. <laughs> Thanks it. everybody for taking a listen, and we'd like to just encourage you, you know, to be to be curious, listen to other perspectives, and especially as it comes to peace in the park, just jump in, join in, and and let the togetherness, the proximity, the unity, do some of that legwork for us. So, thanks everybody. Have a great afternoon. Thank you. Thanks for listening. We welcome your feedback, suggestions, and any program ideas. Spoken Word Artist Propaganda states, we need to consider the waters we swim in. Maybe it's not toxic to me, but it's toxic to my neighbor. And if it's toxic to my neighbor, it's probably toxic to me too. Let's breathe better water. Contact us on our website at www.bridgethedivide.life. 
You can email us, info at bridgethedivide.life, or reach us on social media. Facebook is Bridge the Divide Community, and on Instagram, it's Bridge the Divide Podcast.